All right. So as you are an entrepreneur and you're growing and you're trying to decide your mindsets or you're working with other people, there's one word that I think is underrated in all that, and that is confidence. So I'm super excited to bring on someone here who is a confidence coach, the author of Unshakable Confidence, and you may recognize his name, Justin Gorini. Thank you, Justin, for coming on the Maximizing E-Commerce podcast. Hey, thank you so very much. It's a pleasure to be here. Thanks for having me on. And I am so excited to talk about confidence, especially when it comes to commerce, e-commerce, especially here. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and you know, I know a lot of people, uh, we were talking before we started recording, and you said a lot of people get into e-commerce to be kind of behind the scenes. And yet, whether you're the face of your brand or you're behind the scenes and, and uh, doing your thing, confidence is a huge factor uh, in determining uh, whether or not you're going to be successful. Gotcha. And that's so true. That's so true. It's the confidence in, you know, what you're doing. Are you moving in the right direction? Are you, uh, for those who are listening, they don't see the, I, I love it. They're the walk by faith, um, the, the sign you've got behind you. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, for those who are maybe listening to like, okay, the name sounds familiar. Where might I know that? So <laughs> how, how we got it, we got to throw it out there because, you know, it's kind of the thing. Of How course. is it that some people may know your name if they're not aware of you in the confidence arena? Sure. Yeah. No, a lot of people aren't aware of me yet in the confidence arena because it's something that I've really pivoted uh, my business to and added on top of the things that I do. Where most people would remember me from is from the first season of American Idol where I sang in front of 30 million viewers on live television each week. Uh, all the way up to the finales where I duked it out with Kelly Clarkson. And then uh, some people might have seen me in one of the six Broadway shows that I have been in in New oh, York. Wow. And then mm, a lot of people now have seen me uh, pop up on their TV screens as uh, a character called Lil Sweet. You'll often hear Lil Sweet <laughs> oh, on nice. the TV. Yeah. And so uh, I play uh, a character named Lil Sweet who gives sweet treats in the form of Diet Dr. Peppers and Dr. Peppers to uh, very deserving folks. That's been a six year long national oh, wow. commercial and print yes. campaign. So yes, that's been very fun. Yes, yes, and, yes, And yes. so, yeah, and a lot, yes, a lot of people know yes. that now I do that as well. Yeah, there you go. Yes. And so, you know, what I did, um, you know, I've worked with entertainers and uh, influencers and entrepreneurs over the years and just given advice. And mm -hmm. then it wasn't until the, uh, uh, horrible year for everyone, for most people anyway, that was 2020 uh, mm. came along where all of the acting jobs, all the entertainment jobs that I had w went on pause mm. and I had to figure out, okay, how can I continue to do what it is that I love, but serve in a different way? And that was when okay. I pivoted my business towards confidence and and really towards serving influencers and entrepreneurs and helping them develop unshakable confidence via my core confidence method. Okay. Well, let, let's we'll, we'll definitely get into that because I think uh, it's something intriguing. And for those maybe who aren't familiar, you know, before the little sweet days, um, you know, when you were on American Idol, I have to give mm -hmm. you props that, you know, when I watched that, I was like, there was one person that just seemed to for lack of a better word, own that stage more than anyone else. And that was you. And, yeah. you know, that can't be easy because, you know, now it's like, you know, things like American Idol, um, there's all these other different shows like it. So people kind of get a sense of like what it's got to be like. There was kind of star search that we grew up with, mm -hmm. you know, but it wasn't quite the same, yeah. you know, it was that was like a Saturday afternoon in syndication type thing. Whereas, you know, American Idol was, especially that first season, was a, such a cultural moment. And so the pressure must have been intense. What was the pressure like on that show, if you don't mind me asking? Oh, the pressure was exactly what you call it. Intense. I mean, you are literally standing up, having to learn and, and perform music at a pace that is so, so quick. Um, you only get 90. It's like Olympic it's like the Olympics, right? There are athletes who train for four years just to get four minutes mm. in, term, in terms of their performance, right? Well, it's kind of the same thing. You're training, 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 training for 90 seconds, right? Mm -hmm. Every single week, 90 seconds is the, the length of the performance. And so the pr pressure was tremendous just for that. And then to know that you were doing it on live television in front of 30 million plus viewers each oh, yeah. and every week, being the number one 
TV show in the nation. Um, it, it was it was insanity, and I think that part of what helped me get through it was ignorance, <laughs> the ignorance <laughs> of being 22 years old and really not understanding the full scope of what it is that I was doing. Because it's like, you know, 30 million viewers, how do you wrap your head around that? That just becomes a right. number at a certain point, right? Yeah, exactly. You know, it's like exactly. any more than, and then a couple, you know, even in the biggest sports stadiums in America, we've only got like, what, 10, 10,000 people, like right, people right, right, 15 right. max, right? Mm -hmm. In some of the more college, like bigger places. And so like, once you get past that, it just becomes a number and this blah thing. And so what I really, come back to time and time again when people say things and, and and say wonderful words like you said it's like you know how did i own that stage and when you think about owning something and having the confidence in order to do that in front of 30 million people confidence comes from competence and mm. knowing when well, and then he asked well what do you mean by competence like it's the knowing well how did you know how did you never done that before you've never been on a stage on live television like that and before in front of 30 million people but i i had bits and pieces of that growing up okay and my mother was one of the first 200 people to start up cnn in, oh, wow. in the 80s and she was an anchor woman and i remember waking up mornings in her dressing room while she was putting on her makeup in front of the the lights you know in the mirror and everything uh -huh. and i would go to weatherman uh, would go to breakfast with the weatherman i would sit and i would play on the set one person even let me operate and this is at five six years old let me operate the teleprompter uh, oh really <laughs> during a live broadcast and so don't again, push that you button that. yeah and that's exactly what it's, i was like hey what's that orange button he's like don't press that that's a self-destruct right yeah and <laughs> yeah. of course it was the off button and oh, so geez. then that was my mom and then my dad uh, was a high-ranking politician would eventually become uh, the first African-American police chief in Atlanta. Oh, and wow. so I was around the lights. I was around the cameras. I was around the politics. I was a child of a certain generation in the South that was to be seen and not heard. And if I was to be mm. heard from, I better know what I was talking about and be polite and use the correct words and, you know, shake, right. firm handshake, look them in the eye, all right, that. Right. And so... Throughout my life, I had been conditioned, little did I know, to be prepared. I, I learned how to mm. be prepared. And that competence, that knowing and the doing of it year after year after year um, really set me up for the confidence that it took to own that stage. Okay, that's that's awesome. Now, one question that we were kind of talking a little bit about before we hit record was, you know, there's the owning of the stage is one thing when it's like, okay, it's your time to go up, which has to be like a lot of pressure every week, you know, mm -hmm. that 90 seconds of singing the song and whatnot. But then, you know, I can only imagine like that final moment, you know, where it's like, it's down to just you and Kelly. And then what there was Ryan Seacrest, which people know his name. Then there was, I forget his name, the other guy who Brian Dunkelman. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Brian Dunkelman. Yeah. So it was the four of you on stage. And I remember watching this and thinking, will they just announce the winner? All right. Like they just keep going back to more commercials. And it was like, you know, I can't imagine how much money Ford and Coca-Cola must have spent so on advertising, <laughs> um, which I, I understand they're, you know, just trying to get yeah. their name out. But it was uh, one of those things that when they finally get to it, like, and I, I rewatched it this morning as we're recording this, that, you know, it was like, uh, you, you looked like you were, I mean, granted, I would have been nervous in that situation, but you looked very confident and very in the moment. How do you, what, let me do this notice. What was going on in your mind when it was like, because they kept dragging it out. Like, did you know they're going to drag it out that much? Oh, of course. Yeah, of course. That, that was something that they consistently did week in and week out. <laughs> right. and knowing that they had, I think it spiked around 50 million viewers for the finale. Oh, wow. Knowing it was such a big moment, they wanted to stretch it out. And, and right. they, had trained, they had trained us Totally all, understood why the they audience would, yeah. included. Yeah, of course. And so um, even, in, even in the moment, uh, you know, it's like my son, for example, the other day, mm -hmm. uh, he wanted to go up and get a toy from his room. He's about eight years old now. And he's like, can you come up with me? And I said, no, it's okay. You can go up there. The lights are on. And he's like, yeah, but I'm, I'm afraid. And I'm like, that's okay. It's like, and it's like, be brave. He said, yeah, but mm -hmm. I'm afraid. And I said, well, you know what? Bravery is not, not the absence of fear. Right. Bravery is feeling the fear 
and doing it anyway. And that's, that's courage. And so he said, okay. And he went up there and he got his toy and lights were on. He was fine and he was afraid, but he did it. And Uh that, that really encapsulates that moment for me in 2002, sitting on the stage or standing on the stage where I was extremely nervous and yet I was there. There wasn't anywhere I could go. Right? Right, exactly. I had to be. I had to stay there. Contractually <laughs> obligated, if not morally right. obligated, to stay there. And hear right. the, who won, and yet, you know, that moment is a was a culmination of months worth of work, and it was a culmination of a ton of moments. One being when I was stage right in the first wing, standing next to the executive producer earlier on in the show and watching Kelly Clarkson sing a moment like this. Now, Mm. unlike any of the other seasons, that first season, we both had to sing the quote unquote finale song, right? That was the great equalizer, right? Even though it was not. And and they changed it (laughs) in later years because, you know, how can you have a great equalizer if it's a country song, then, and you have somebody who's a pop artist and you have somebody who's a a country and then that's not there's nothing equal about that so um they changed it later on but when i was watching it and i was watching kelly sing that song i'll never forget standing next to the executive producer and leaning over to him and saying as she was midway through her beautiful rendition i said you know you're gonna have to hire some extra security and he looked at me shocked he's like what what why i said (laughs) because if I win this, there's going to be a riot. And what I meant by that was she was singing the living heck out of that song. I had gone on, I think, before her and been like, eh, okay. If you go back and listen to the two versions of a moment like this, you will see just in that alone why she won, right? But... I knew in that moment, there was like, there's no way that I should win this, A. And B, I'm here. I have gotten to the finale. And, you know, however you want to spin it, it's like, I'm uh, either I'm going to be the number one overall, or I'm going to be the number one guy (laughs) who made it here. Right? And so I knew then, if you fast forward into that moment where I was standing there, I was saying, oh my goodness, Please don't let it be me on one hand. And then my ego and my desire just to win in general was like, but it would be cool if it was me. But I really hope (laughs) it's not me. Right. And then when I heard her name, I literally remember, I just remember turning and just saying, yes, baby. And, and hugging her. Um, I mean, it, it helped that I I absolutely adored her, loved her, still do. And, and that we had been through something to get, you know what I mean? Like, obviously, we were friends. But there's this thing when you have what I call core confidence, mm. when you truly recognize your own worth and your own value, and you do things and say things and behave in a way that speaks to that self-worth, speaks to that recognition of your own value, and here's the asterisk, if you're taking notes, your own unique ability to deliver whatever message, service, product that it is. Because when you have that, then you can recognize and realize that there is no competition. Nobody can do you better than you can do you. So as I stood there up on the stage, I realized nobody can sing and do the things like me. There are people who can do it differently, right? But they can't do it like me. And in this moment, this is not a competition anymore. This is, oh my goodness, can we please be done this so we can have our lives back and get on with what it is that we want to do that we've worked so very hard to to create over these past months. And so when she won, it was the exact right thing that needed to happen in that moment. I did not feel anything other than joy and pride and relief and that was all of of that was encapsulated in that final moment yeah and we were also talking that i watched the uh when i rewatched it like you genuinely like the way you're describing it like it's not just hyperbole like, sometimes it's like people go back and they try to like oh what was really going on in my head was this like yeah. you could see it in your face it looked very yeah. genuine like you were very genuinely excited you know sometimes you watch these things where they announce like the winner 
and the person who is not the winner kind of looks like get me the heck out of here and like this kind of fake smile but like yours was very like you could tell you were happy for her you were happy in the moment you were confident in yourself and yep. what you were doing so what i'd like to do at this moment is kind of now unpack that a little bit and make that actionable for folks that aren't on the American Idol stage or on the Broadway stage or, you know, singing for Dr. Pepper, but you know, what are those things that people could do? So is someone saying, you know, one, eh, I'm confident enough. I mean, do, do I, do I need to increase my level of confidence? Like what would be a reason if someone even asked you, like, is this even important for something to focus on? 100%. And I will say this, you know, to the person who's like, nah, I'm confident enough. We often confuse cockiness with confidence. Mm. If you don't like the word cocky, think bravado, right? We, <laughs> we, we, because some people are like, ew, but like, fine. So, uh, we, we often confuse those two. And there's plenty of examples in the media, social media, in pop culture, where we see people get out in front of a camera or in front of an audience and behave in a way that we think is confident, but really is just bravado. Mm. And so what, what do I mean by that? What do I mean bravado or cockiness? Well, bravado or cockiness are doing things, saying things or behaving in a way that has the energy of intimidation or to impress. So mm. doing things, saying things with the intention to intimidate or impress. Now, a lot of people, I know you can think of one person right now, somewhere in the media landscape, in the uh, uh, um, pop culture landscape, who does that? Right, and right. We don't have to name names, but we can all probably no, at least no, think no, of no, one no. person. We don't think of one. No, no, no. Right. I'm not trying to. I'm not leading you anywhere. I'm just. Right. No, no, I, I, know you're I know where you're going. I know where you're going. I know where you're going. Right. And so, and so, right. Now, what's the opposite of that? I believe that to be confidence. Now, confidence has the energy or the intention of, like I said before, recognizing your own value, mm. recognizing your own self worth. It's so much more of an inward internal energy recognizing your own unique ability to deliver your service message product and so when we look at the two energies or intentions side by side of confidence on one hand bravado or cockiness on the other hand cockiness and bravado is this outward repellent energy that's why we don't mm. want to be around people who act like that way we want mm -hmm. to be somewhere else yet confidence is an inward or an attractive energy. It makes people want to be around us. It makes people like, you know, because when, when we're around, what, what do we do? We, we compliment, we're kind, it's not a competition. We recognize our own self-worth. We speak and act from a place of value. Mm -hmm. And more often than not, we give value mm -hmm. to others. Whereas cockiness comp, uh, and bravado is, is trying to almost steal the value from others in, in order to inflate uh, falsely our own self-worth. And so how do we develop that and where do we take that? Okay, great. So now that we understand the difference between confidence and cockiness, then how do we develop confidence and what I call core confidence? And that is the art and science of developing four key skill sets and applying them to four key areas, or what I think are the four key areas of your life. What do I mean by that? What are the skill sets? Well, the skill sets are clarity, mm -hmm. commitment, creativity, and certainty. And then we apply those to the four key areas of our life, which is our body, our spirituality, our relationships, be that with a significant other, your children, your family, or a business, be that making money, keeping money, building our business, scaling all of that. And so when we look at it from that kind of frame, mm -hmm. then we see, okay, yeah, you may be confident in your body. Sure, you may run and exercise and look and feel the way you wanna feel, great. But what I've seen in my studies is that of those four areas, Usually people max out around two. They're like, I'm really confident in my body and I'm confident in my business. Mm. But my relationship with my significant other, eh, with my kids, eh, not so great. My spiritual connection, I, I, don't, I don't care about any of that. I focus on any of that. 
right? Or, hey, I am so in tune with my significant other. My relationships are amazing. They're on fire with passion and love. I have just, I meditate every single day. I journal, right? Relationships, spirituality. But eh, my business, it's kind of, it's hemorrhaging cash. It's not quite doing so well. My body, ah, I do a lot of sitting, you know? Mm -hmm. Not a, right? You know what I mean? <laughs> and so uh, I, my goal really with creating core confidence is to create that four dimensional ability uh, of, of having confidence, of having that self worth and, and leveling up, as in a sort of a, a colloquial way of putting it, those skills, that clarity, that commitment, that creativity, and that certainty so that you can build a foundation of core confidence that you can like build the body of your dreams on that you can build the spirituality of your dreams on that you can build the relationship and connections with the people you love on that you can build the business that will ultimately serve all the other things uh, on top of that and and so the number one place i love to start with people is just getting clear getting mm. clear on where you are today okay so where would I know someone... that was a lot. That was a whole lot. I just I just threw the whole book at you. No, that was good. It was good. So now that I've got kind of the cliff notes, I think that gave us yeah. a, a a good yeah. kind of connection to uh, yeah. uh, where we're going to go next, which I think leads itself into the clarity because it sounds like the clarity is the foundation where you have to kind of build up to that point of like, you know, everyone talks about like, you know, knowing where you're going, but you also have to know where you're at. Yes. And so, you know, maybe the goal is to become confident, but you know, if, if you don't know if you're in New York or Miami and you're trying to get to Los Angeles, it's going to be a little challenging. Yeah, absolutely. And that's such a wonderful um, frame that you put on that. I could drop you in the middle of the woods somewhere with the most expensive piece of GPS equipment. Right. Mm -hmm. And yet if you don't have two things, you're never going to find your way out of the woods. And the most important thing really is the coordinates of where you are right now. Right? Mm. That's it. Right? You can know where you're going. You can have a – I could just hand you a, a coordinates of, for Los Angeles, as you say. But mm. if I just drop you in the middle of nowhere in the United States, then having the coordinates for L.A. doesn't mean anything unless you know or are able to download or find the coordinates of where you are. Mm -hmm. And so – with that in mind, when I talk about clarity, you know, a lot of people think uh, the truth shall, shall set you free, right? That's mm -hmm. something that we hear all the time. And while, yes, that is true, there is truth to that, um, I love to say that the facts will set you free. Mm. And getting clear on the facts will set you free, right? Because truth is relative. We, uh, especially in America here, have seen how truth can be relative in the media landscape, <laughs> right? My truth is not your truth is not our parents' truth is not the person's down the street's truth. And if we want to find our version of the truth, we can go to Fox or we can go to CNN or we can go to OAN or we can go to MSNBC or we can go mm -hmm. anywhere we want to find our truth, quote unquote, right? And so... Uh, I feel like truth is rel relative, whereas facts, either they are or they are not. And facts, are, I, I believe, are also more measurable than mm. truth. So, for example, a lot of people have challenges with their body. Either they want to gain weight or they want to lose weight. And so when uh, I talk to people about you know confidence and, and how you uh, can confidently move forward and, and create uh, goals and targets that stick and that you stick to and don't end up being our sort of December 31st, I'm going to lose 10 pounds, and then the second week of February it all falls apart. Um, I, I help people get clear on what are the facts, what are the measurable facts about where you are, for example, with your body, right? And simple, simple, simple things. And we go much deeper than this, but it's like, okay, what's your caloric intake versus what your caloric uh, uh, burn is, right? What do you weigh now, right? What mm -hmm. is your BMI? All those measurable facts. Because when we get clear on the measurable facts of where we are today, then we can create a future that is not based on fantasy, 
which mm. is what most people do, right? That December 31st, I'm going to lose 10 pounds, right? Right, right, and they right. Don't th we don't think about how we're behaving today, who we are being today, not to mention what we are doing in terms of our body today. And we just, again, have this hazy sort of vision of the future of what it's going to be like, if that even, when we've lost 10 pounds. And yet there's no clarity in that. There's mm -hmm. no facts in that. And once you create, again, the facts of today, you can then begin to look at the clarity and the facts of tomorrow, right? Okay, I know what my caloric intake is today. What does it have to be in order to hit my weight goal tomorrow, right? And so clarity is so super huge because it, it really focuses in and opens up the next sort of chapter or the next step, which is, okay, I'm clear on where I am today. I'm clear on where it is I want to go. What is the commitment that I need to make to myself in order to get there? Okay. Yeah, that, that's good. I, I definitely agree with you. It's uh, We got to get clear. We got to get factual. Now, where I think some people might get a little hung up um, is how do you get clear on the facts and things that aren't quite as black and white as like this like caloric intake? So, you know, when it's mm -hmm. like your spouse or, mm -hmm. you know, your relationship with your kids or, you mm -hmm. know, your some of the or spirituality, like some of sure. those more kind of yeah. uh, absolutely not quite as I don't even know what the word I'm looking for is like it's not tangible. Yeah, exactly. Well, I I, I would say there are things that you can create that are tangible, right? The ah, one sort of okay. tangible thing when it comes to relationships, when it comes to spirituality, um, emotional life, right? Mm -hmm. Things just like, well, how do you quantify a feeling? Right, I understand that. And I would then say to you, well, when it comes to a relationship, there are measurable things beyond feelings. One of the greatest assets we have, probably the most valuable asset we have. Most people say, what, money? No, it's time. Mm. Time. Time is one of the most valuable assets that we have, and it is highly measurable, right? Very true. Wanna, Very so true. many people say, I don't have enough time. I don't have enough time for this. I don't have enough time for that. Okay, for people who, who are listening right now who don't think that they have enough time to do what it is that they want, I would challenge you to try an exercise that I learned from uh, an outstanding marketer, Alex Sharfin. Uh, he said, okay, you know what? If you don't think you have enough time, get a journal get a pen or maybe your phone, whatever it is, mm -hmm. and set an alarm or a timer for 15 minutes. And at the end of every 15 minutes, write down what you've been doing for the past 15 minutes. Mm. Do it for a day. Do it for a day. Do it for two days. Do it for the, if you could do it for a week, it might drive you crazy to do it for a week, <laughs> right. but if you could do it even for 24 hours, right? Or, or two days, you will begin to clearly see again clarity mm. measuring the facts you will see oh my goodness i spent and you tally it all up i spent how much time doing daydreaming how much time sitting on the pot looking at instagram how much time ex looking at, at television and and binge watching this show that i really oh my good i do have the time mm -hmm. right again clearly measurable facts so it, to apply that to your relationships and to um, spirituality, it's like, how much time do you spend? And I mean, not just time sitting on the couch, quality time. So what is the quality time that you're spending with someone you want to be in relationship with, right? Whether that mm. be your wife or your kids, what is that? And then if you want to go a step deeper, you say, well, what's the intensity mm. of that time? When I'm with my kids, I know that I'm being super intense. And I don't mean like, like drill sergeant intense. I mean like intense in terms of my focus is on them and nothing else when my phone is somewhere else in the room. When I don't have my eye watch on and get a, oh, here's, you know, this news agency telling me something I don't need to see, right? right. And so, right, so, so just those two metrics alone, the time and then mm. the quality or intensity of time will tell you. And if you don't have the relationship that you want with your significant other, it's most likely because you're not spending A, enough time, and B, the quality of your time is uh, uh, poor or low. And then you wanna go even further than that, it's like, well, 
you know, are you willing to, how much time have you spent, especially you know, people who find that they uh, get into the sort of roommate relationship in, mm. in their relationships. It's like, well, you know, how many times have you collided with your partner? And what do I mean by collided? I mean, like, how many times have you gotten into a conversation and like argued? How many times have you gone? How many times have you come? At, because in that collision, in those arguments, if you're both willing to do it in a way that is productive, you begin to tear down the walls that stand between you and your partner. And you begin to connect. Yeah, it doesn't feel great at first, right? It never does. But at the end of the day, if you want to connect with someone, you've got to be vulnerable. You've got to be open. You've got to ask for what you want. You've got to be willing to face the resistance that's going to come from both sides. And also you've got to be willing to engage in civil discourse, which means getting into the muck and the mire, but respectfully listening to someone else's opinion, respectfully uh, delivering your own opinion and, and just getting in there and getting your hands dirty. Right. Yeah, that's great. And you know, that same philosophy can go with a lot of other relationships, maybe even in business, you know, Absolutely. like if someone has a business partner and maybe things aren't going the way they'd like, mm -hmm. you know, maybe you kind of mm -hmm. got to get in there, that intensity, that 100%. collision, like you're yes. talking about, and that's being confident in who you are mm -hmm. and that, you know, you're trying to do it is not the bravado like you talked about before, mm -hmm. but, mm -hmm. you know, coming from a place of, you know, attractiveness and i don't mean necessarily like you know being good looking sure. but just being someone that's like willing to have those conversations yes. you know oftentimes we think we're going to be more attractive by not having those hard conversations but sometimes by having those hard conversations we're actually improving things even though it may be uncomfortable in the yes. moment and so it sounds like those are all great ways to get additional clarity factual like how much are you having those conversations you know mm -hmm. how much time are you devoting to things because as peter drucker once said um whatever gets measured gets managed so if you're not yes. managing the or if you're not measuring these things it's hard to manage them so now we've got clarity the facts will set us free um so now what are we doing next well once we and and just to just to touch on spirituality as well because mm. that's a real sort of open you know metaphysical right, thing. right 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 you know uh, again if i go back to confidence comes from competency knowing mm -hmm. right and the doing of a thing it's like you if if you are longing for a spiritual connection i mean my my nomenclature is god right and mm -hmm. i believe that you know god can never love me more than he already does, right? It's just, it is. And, and and the choice becomes whether I turn my face towards him or away from him, whether I accept that love or I don't accept that love. Now, mm -hmm. that may be Krishna for you. It may be Allah, Buddha, Yahweh, whatever it is, Muhammad, it doesn't matter. But again, that confidence comes from competency. And how much time are you spending investing in your relationship with self or spirit or the universe or whatever it is you want to call that what are you reading what are you doing in terms of quieting your mind you know it's like um, i think uh dr bernard beckwith said if we do not go within we go without and so it's again it's those metrics that you can find how much did i read today from whatever source it is that you want to find your mm -hmm. spiritual uh guidance from Right. What was the intensity and the quality of mm. that time? There are measurable metrics. How long did I meditate? Did I meditate? Whatever it is for you. So um, once you again find those to get clarity on those metrics and you can go as deep as you want. The next thing is you take that data again, as you so wonderfully put it, if it is not measured, it is not managed. OK, great. We've measured it. But then how do we manage it? And it comes down to creating a commitment. Mm. And what's that? Well, uh, another way of saying a commitment is to decide. And the Latin root of the word to decide means to cut off from, to literally cut out any and all other options. And yet, great, we've done this before. We've made commitments and decisions before. We've mm. cut off from other things before. But what, what has gotten in the way? Well, it goes back to confidence. And what's the Latin root of the word 
well, not the Latin root, but what's a root word, the English root word of confidence, and that's to confide. Mm. To confide means to trust. Confidence, confide in self. The reason why most of us do not keep our commitments, do not make a decision and stick with it, because we don't trust ourselves, because we do not have confidence in ourselves. And why? Because we have broken our word to ourselves so mm. many times. One of the things uh, um, uh, you and I both just did um, the uh, Make More Offers Challenge with uh, Dr. Myron Golden, one of the things that he said was, you know, the bad thing about telling a lie is that some people have heard some of the lies that you have told, but you have heard all of them, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? And so we've lied to ourselves so much that we don't believe a word we say. And so mm. when it comes to making that commitment, when it comes to making that decision, if you don't have confidence, if you don't trust in yourself, and how do we, again, because it's a waterfall thing when we talk about clarity, commitment, creativity, and certainty. When we get that clarity, then we have something solid to stand on. The numbers, we can trust in the metrics. Mm. And then that gives us a springboard to say, okay, here's where I am today, that measurable fact of where I am today or facts of where I am today. Here's where I want to be in the future, the measurable facts of where I want to be in the future. What's the commitment What's the decision I need to make? And really at the root of all of that, most people think, oh, well, what do I have to do? What do I have to do to get from here to there? And that's a trap because it's mm. not necessarily the doing. Yes, the doing will get you so far. The hustle will get you so far. But what is it that really are the roots of that doing? It comes down to who are you being? So really the question that you asked before, what do I have to do? What do I have to do, 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 is really, who do I have to be? Mm. Who do I have to be in order to have that body that I want? What are the actions I need to take, the thoughts I need to have, the words that need to come out of my mouth, the relationships I need to create with myself and with other people and with food, if you wanna talk about that, for body? Who do I need to be? to be a, a, a truly connected spiritual child of God or whatever deity or whatever universe you wanna put it together. Who do I need to be to be the most amazing father I can be or mother that I can be or non-binary parent I can be? Who do I need to be to be the best partner? Who do I need to be to have the business that truly serves at the highest level? And when we get into that conversation, then, then we can see the roots of commitment, the roots of decision. And it becomes much easier to keep our commitments because we're not just doing, we're not just doing, we're not just animatronic people who are hustling, who are pounding the pavement trying to make money. No, we are in the act of becoming mm. that person or that, that being who will get that thing or who will serve at that level or who will be that partner and it's so much more powerful and it's so much more rooted in the truth of who we are and the expansion that uh the never-ending expansion that is possible for us as human beings wow that was that was great so you know the thing i really took away from there is you know when we think about it the things we say to ourselves sometimes you know, if we're constantly, and I never really thought about the the lying to ourselves, like, you know, like kind of other than, you know, the way it was like, just the way you framed it, it was perfect there of, you know, we oftentimes will make commitments to ourselves and we don't hold them up to. So if someone else lied to us as much as we lie to ourselves sometimes, yeah. or we just have the best of intentions, but we just don't follow through. So it almost becomes yeah. almost like a lie, like a lie by omission type of thing. Yeah. Or, you know, when we, the things we say to ourselves. So if we have that commitment and we start moving forward and being more of the person and becoming more of the person who's going to, we all want to go back to the do and the, what can we check off the list? But sometimes right. it's not just in the doing it's in the being. Yeah, for sure. And, and just to put a little bow on that, we, especially I would say in America, you know, we have this idea of, have, do, be, mm. right? I'm gonna have 
the resources I need so that I can do what I want to do. Therefore, I will be happy, be mm -hmm. fulfilled, be mm -hmm. wealthy, whatever mm -hmm. it is. But the real true power comes when we reverse that. And there are tons of books. <laughs> that right, have right, this right. Title, right? Be, do, have. When mm -hmm. we become, who do I need to be? Right? I need to be happy. I need to be wealthy. I need to be of the mindset and of the actions and of the thought, all the things, right? In order to cement a foundation that then drives me to do the things that I need to do in order to have the things or thing that I want, right? Mm -hmm. and, and it's so much more powerful and so much, any building that's ever built, whether it's your house or a, a skyscraper, you must first dig a solid foundation or mm -hmm. else the whole thing comes tumbling down, right? And so mm -hmm. who am I being? Who do I need to be it is the act of tunneling deep into your spirit, deep into your psyche uh, and and creating that foundation that allows you then to build the home, the body, the relationship, the business, the spiritual connection of your dreams. Awesome. Awesome. Well, if somebody wanted to learn more about creating this uh, spiritual uh, body connection um, business, everything else. And the way you're framing it, and I love the way you're framing yeah. it here. Where would they go to do that? You know what? Uh, it's so super simple. I am actually about to release my book soon. And mm. so all you have to do is go to get your free digital copy to justin.club, not .com, justin.club. That will take okay. you right to where you can find the book. The book goes uh, into uh, into depth uh, about what we just spoke about. And um, I'm so excited for it. <laughs> it's, so, it's called Unshakable Confidence. And it is really the formula for being, doing, having, and giving more than you ever imagined. And so I talk about clarity, commitment, creativity, certainty, how that applies to your body, your spirituality, your relationships, and your business. And it is a, a wonderful introduction to the world of unshakable confidence and the core confidence method. I love it. I love it. So I definitely recommend folks go to justin.club. So it's almost like you were in Justin's club, so to speak. That's right. Get your uh, digital copy and uh, definitely let us know when the... Uh, physical copy is available. Yes. And yes. Yes. 100%. Yes. We'll definitely help yes. uh, promote that. So, yeah. So this has been a great conversation. Really appreciate having you here, Justin. My pleasure. Thank you so very much for having me. Thank you.